What's up guys, it's Matt, and today, today we are talking, talking about, about Venom. What the... Remember, no spoilers Matt, we won't want to ruin it for anyone. Okay, yeah, sure, uh, no, no, no spoilers, okay. Don't forget uh, to tell them how awesome I am as well. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna give my, my, my honest opinion. And Tom, tell them how great he is too. Well, like I said, I, I'm just gonna give my, my honest thoughts on it. Okay. But if we don't agree, we shall make it known. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you you do what you've uh, what you got to do. So Venom. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Venom, directed by Ruben Fischer, starring Michelle Williams, Riz Ahmed and Tom Hardy, is Sony's attempt at starting their own superhero cinematic universe. Sony, for those of you that don't know, own the movie rights to Spider-Man and his array of villains. Obviously, they've made a deal with Marvel Studios so that Marvel Studios can use Spider-Man in the MCU. So Sony are free to still use any of Spider-Man's villains, just without Spider-Man, um, to create their own cinematic universe, really, as long as those villains aren't part of the deal that they've made with Marvel Studios for Spider-Man in the MCU. So of course, Sony have decided to go ahead and make a Venom movie without Spider-Man. Now, I'm gonna level with you guys on this one. I was very skeptical going into this movie. Being such a big Marvel fan and being so invested in Marvel comics, Marvel Studios and the MCU, for me, Venom is very much ingrained in Spider-Man and for there to be a Venom movie without Spider-Man, I was, I, yeah, I was very skeptical sort of going into it. That being said, I'm going to try look at it as kind of a Marvel fan, and I'm also going to try look at it as someone who's not a Marvel fan. So right off the bat, what I will say is that the kind of opening half an hour of the movie is just a little bit of a mess. The pacing is just all over the place. The film is trying to get to a certain point very, very fast, and the beats of the story are just like boom, 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 go, go, go. And although it's moving along really fast, it just seems to go on forever. I, I just want to see Tom Hardy get Venom and, you know, the shenanigans, I suppose, to begin. But it just seems to take forever to build up to this point. It kind of feels like there's a lot missing. Tom Hardy has already come out and said that there's about 40 minutes worth of footage that has been cut from the movie. Don't know whether he's referring to anything from the start, but it feels like there should have been more there. I mean, good thing there wasn't anything more there because it dragged on, but at the same time, it feels a bit disjointed. We're introduced to Tom Hardy's character, Eddie Brock. We're introduced to his partner, played by Michelle Williams. Obviously, the film's trying to make us kind of feel for them. The chemistry there between them's just not quite there. Like, I can believe that they're buds, you know, good friends, but I, I I was never wholly convinced on them as a couple. At the same time, the film is trying to set up Riz Ahmed's character, who is pretty much the evil mastermind. He's, he's the bad guy of the movie. He's kind of an Elon Musk type who goes a bit crazy. Riz Ahmed is really good in this movie, and you do kind of buy into him. The only problem is, is that as the film goes on, you kind of start questioning his character a bit more. Like, where has this sudden maniac drive come from it, it, it's like you get that he's bad but it just like there's no explanation really as to as to why he just kind of says things and does things so the film does pick up a little bit once tom hardy has bonded with venom the symbiote or symbiote topic for debate right there the interactions between hardy and venom are quite humorous and sort of how he starts discovering you know the various things that venom can do do lead to some very funny moments but at times those moments kind of feel out of place with the rest of the film it's kind of unsure on where it wants to go it wants to kind of approach Deadpool levels of you know out there hilarity but at the same time it kind of wants to be a bit dark gritty and serious and the film never truly finds a balance on what it really wants to do in that regard over here in the UK the film is a 15 so obviously the a lot of the kind of jokes and stuff kind of pull back a little bit from you know they could just go outright outrageous but they don't they pull back so they can obviously get that 15 rating i think the film would have benefited if they'd have pushed it and gone for an 18 or in an america r rating kind of like deadpool if they'd have done that they could have gone a lot darker than it did and the jokes could have been you know, a lot more vulgar yet hilarious at the same time. Now, 
as I said, for me as a, a Marvel comic book fan, it was kind of difficult Venom without Spider-Man. I mean, I see how they kind of got around doing his origin. Again, it's not something that I want to spoil too much for you. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it's kind of like Sony have just made Venom an anti-hero for the sake of being an anti-hero, but he's not really an anti-hero. He's just kind of there doing his thing. Sony claimed that they've made this movie because, you know, the fans want a Venom movie after the absolute disaster that we got of Topher Grace in uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. You know, Sony have felt that the fans have wanted a good Venom movie for a long, long time. It's like, that's not what fans want at all. Fans want a good Spider-Man story with Venom in it. They don't want a Venom movie. Not yet, anyway. The CGI in the movie is kind of hit and miss. Venom, when he's kind of stood there still, or when, you know, the head's coming out and Venom and Eddie Brock are having these conversations, it does look really good. The problem comes is when the action scenes happen. I would definitely not recommend anyone to go see this movie in 3D. I always find with heavy action movies in 3D that you can't really make out the action properly. It just doesn't work properly with the 3D. This movie, I saw it in 2D and you can barely make out it. It's so much shaky camera and just blurriness. You can barely make out the sort of big CGI heavy fights, I would definitely not recommend seeing the movie in 3D at all because you're just not going to have a clue what's going on whatsoever. Also on the topic of action sequences, there is a chase sequence in the movie which just goes on for far too long. You think it's over and then, oh no, like we're going to do something slightly different. There's a chase sequence with the drones that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like the logic behind it is just like, what? Like, what's the aim here? What's going on? Mission Impossible has kind of spoilt me in terms of great, like, vehicle chase sequences. Because throughout this entire, throughout this entire chase sequence, I was just like, wow, this is just a, a blurry mess. Whereas, you know, Mission Impossible, the last Mission Impossible film, absolutely smashed all of their vehicle chase sequences. All in all, I could go on about this film in a lot more detail. I think maybe in a week or so, once people have had the chance to see it, I might do a more in-depth kind of spoiler review in regards to it. What I will say is it's, it's just a movie. Like, it's just there. Like, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Tom Hardy was all right. Riz Ahmed was all right. Michelle Williams was all right. It was just like, yeah, it, it was all right. Do I think it's a good, starting point for Sony to do their own um, Spider-Man villain cinematic universe? No. The whole Sony Spider-Man villain cinematic universe is a ridiculous idea anyway and they should just stop. I am going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. Like, I didn't hate it. I'm leaning more towards like, yeah, it was okay. It, it was just there. It was just a movie that, that, that happened and existed. One thing I will say, guys, uh, there are two post-credit sequences. Um, one halfway through the credits, which kind of builds up towards a sequel, which, fingers crossed, does not happen. Uh, and then at the very end of the credits, there is actually a sneak peek of uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the animated Spider-Man movie being made by Sony, which is coming out in December. I would highly recommend you stick around for that. I'm super excited for that movie and the uh, clips that they show from that movie, like just seeing it on the big screen, it looks absolutely incredible. Thank you very much guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the review, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel and let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts on Venom? Would you like me to do a more in-depth spoiler review? Until next time, take care.